Hello everyone, Patman QC here. Welcome back to my video. This is part two on the history of Shinobi. If you haven't checked out part one, be sure to click the link below and let me know in the comments what you think. Enough chit chat though. Let's get on with the history of Shinobi part two. Out of all the Shinobi games in the series, there were only two arcade games. The second one was released in 1989 by the name of Shadow Dancer. This was the only true arcade sequel to the original game. This time around, you take on the role of Joe Musashi's son Hayate, who is dressed to kill in his all-white ninja duds. He is accompanied by his faithful canine Yamato. Your mission this time around is to stop a terrorist organization from taking over the city. A very cool and unique play mechanic is the ability to send your dog Yamato to stun enemies for a few seconds while you attempt to take them out. Instead of having to rescue children, you have to defuse a series of bombs set all throughout the levels. This game plays very similar to the original Shinobi arcade game, almost a Shinobi 1.5 with updated graphics and different missions thanks to it running on the System 18 hardware board. You have three new types of ninja magic available, but thanks to the beefier system specs, when you use your magic, a full screen animation of your ninja is shown performing it. The game was released on a wide variety of home computers and systems. Released the same year for the Sega Genesis was The Revenge of Shinobi, or Super Shinobi as it's known in Japan. The criminal organization Zed is now known as Neo Zed, and Joe has to travel the world to get his revenge and rescue his bride before it's too late. Once again, you control Joe Musashi in what a lot of players call the best game in the series. The game's director, Noriyoshi Oba, intended for the game to be a showcase of what Sega's 16-bit system could do. Not only are the graphics and animation phenomenal, but the music is fantastic as well. The tunes were designed by Yuzo Kushiro, who would go on to compose the classic soundtrack from Streets of Rage. Instead of rescuing multiple hostages throughout the levels, you only have to rescue one at the very end. Your character does have new offensive moves including a somersault which makes Joe jump higher and throw 8 ninja stars at once. Speaking of ninja stars, you no longer have an unlimited supply, so use them wisely. The one hit kills are gone as this time around you have a health meter. There is also an adjustable difficulty option which makes the game a whole lot easier. Another thing to help you on your quest are the various boxes littered throughout the levels. Inside these boxes you'll find weapon upgrades and ninja star refills, but be careful. Sometimes you'll discover bombs inside. You also have four types of ninja magic. The gameplay is great with nice tight controls and excellent speed. Once again, Sega westernized this game by adding multiple pop culture references in their boss fights. Depending on which version of the game you have, and there appears to have been five different releases, various boss fights will see you take on Rambo, Spider-Man, The Terminator, Batman, and Godzilla. The reason there were so many releases was due to copyright issues with each of these characters. Godzilla had to be replaced with a skeleton creature. Spider-Man was actually licensed from Marvel Comics thanks to the Amazing Spider-Man vs. Kingpin game. Batman was changed to a winged demon. Even the title screen was changed since it featured Sonny Chiba in a promotional picture from the show Cage No Gundam. No matter which release you play, it's still an excellent game. When the game was re-released on the Xbox Live and PlayStation Network, all of the pop culture references were removed. 
This included recoloring Spider-Man to a pink variant, since the license with Marvel had ran out by this point. In 1990, Shadow Dancer The Secret of Shinobi was released for the Sega Genesis. This is a loose adaptation of the arcade game, and even though it's the second game on the system, it in no way follows the plot of the original Genesis title. Depending on which version you are playing, you are either playing as Joe's estranged son or Joe himself. You do have your faithful canine to help you in your assault on the evil terrorist organization. Instead of bombs as found in the arcade game, you are back to rescuing hostages. The one hit meter is also back, but there are plenty of free lives to find on each level. The bonus stages also make a return, and if you successfully take down 50 ninjas, you receive 3 extra lives. There are five levels in total with four stages in each area. The graphics have been improved greatly over the arcade version, especially with some of the special effects, including an impressive waving fire in the background. The game was very well done and is a big improvement over the already successful arcade title. In 1990, Sega released a parody of Shinobi titled Alex Kidd in Shinobi World. The game plays differently than previous Alex Kidd games and is much more along the lines of the Master System version of Shinobi. Instead of Ninja Stars, Alex Kidd's basic attack is a sword slice which destroys your enemies. You can also use the sword to open up treasure chests. Inside the various chests, you'll find power-ups including throwing darts, a more powerful sword, extra lives, etc. The game takes place across four levels with three stages each that roughly resemble the original Shinobi arcade game. One interesting note is that the first boss was based on the original arcade game boss by the name of Ken O. This was changed to Mario and made to resemble a certain mustachioed mascot. Unfortunately, it was changed for the final release. It's an amusing, fun little game, especially if you are a fan of Shinobi. In 1990 brought us the release of Cyber Shinobi for the Sega Master System. When a game is released only in Europe, you know there is something stinky going on. In this version, you take on the role of Joe Musashi's grandson as he attempts to stop the evil Cyber Z organization. This is Sega's attempt at trying to strip down the revenge of Shinobi onto the Master System. Unfortunately, it fails in so many ways. You do get new attacks and four types of ninja magic this time around, but the controls feel very stiff. The scrolling is also a little too choppy and the gameplay in my opinion is flat out boring. All of this combined makes this a not so entertaining gameplay experience. In 1991, Shinobi was released for the Game Gear system. Known as GG Shinobi in Japan, this was a fantastic version of the game. You take control of five different colored ninjas as you attempt to take down a huge crime organization. You start with controlling only the red ninja, but as you complete more levels, you will unlock the pink, blue, yellow, and green ninjas with each one having different abilities. Once again, Sega has attempted to bring the style from Revenge of Shinobi over to a less powerful system. This time around though, they have succeeded. The graphics and animation are superb and we even get a few stages with parallax scrolling. 
the gameplay feels just right. This shows what the Game Gear is truly capable of. saw the release of Shinobi 2, The Silent Fury for the Game Gear. This is essentially more of the same from the first game except the gameplay itself has been balanced. Also, the graphics have been greatly improved. The enemies are a bit easier to kill, making the game just a little less frustrating than its predecessor. You have to rescue the same four ninjas as before, but you do play on four brand new stages. The boss fights are very impressive seeing you fight a giant armadillo that shoots spikes out of his back, and also a giant worm among others. This time around, you can choose to play the levels in any order you like. Another bonus is the addition of a password system. You have updated attacks as well as different ninja magic. The scrolling is not only fast, but smooth as well. Check it out if you are a fan of the series. In 1993, in what some would say is the greatest game in the series, Shinobi 3 Return of the Ninja Master was released. Known as the Super Shinobi 2 in Japan, this game focuses more on speed and fluidity of gameplay with the difficulty cranked down just a notch. The story is typical Shinobi fare with Joe taking on the Neo Z organization. You do have more moves at your disposal including being able to wall jump and grapple the ceiling. You have the ability to run from place to place as well as a running slice maneuver. You also have a mid-air dash kick and the ability to block. Since the game came out four years after the original, the graphics and animation look fantastic thanks to the technological advances. The level design is very unique with one level seeing Joe take you a surfboard and another one seeing him ride on horseback. The bosses are absolutely huge with Joe taking on a four-tier battle with a robot that can morph into several different forms. A giant sludge monster found deep within the sewers and even a mechanized Godzilla clone. In my opinion, this is the best Shinobi game on the Genesis and possibly even the best Genesis game period. One interesting note is when the game was first previewed in the magazines and the trade shows, it featured totally different levels than the final game. Rumor has it that Sega was not happy with the progress of the game, so they put it back in development for another six months and redid almost all of the levels. A couple of different betas with the original levels have found their way onto the internet, so you can use your favorite Genesis emulator and download these and try them out. In 1995 saw the release of Shinobi Legions for the Sega Saturn. Known as Shin, Shinobi Den in Japan, and Shinobi X in Europe, it was the only game in the series to feature digitized graphics for all of the characters similar to Mortal Kombat. This was developed by a different team than the previous games and you can tell right away that something is just a bit off. The controls feel a little bit too slippery when compared to previous games. Joe Musashi has been given his walking papers and this time around you take control of a ninja named Sho. Instead of ninja stars being the primary method of attack, the emphasis is on swordplay since your stars are limited and not quite as powerful as in the previous games. There are new moves available such as a spinning sword slice and the ability to reflect your enemy's projectiles. Rather than start each level with your ninja magic, you are forced to collect power-ups. This was also the first Shinobi game to feature blood, with satisfying blood spurts as you slice your enemies in half. It's fun for the entire family. As previously mentioned, the graphics are digitized similar to Mortal Kombat and they look pretty good in my opinion. 
Nothing will ever be traditional hand-drawn pixel art, but I don't think they look too bad. In between levels are some seriously cheesy FMV cutscenes. I'm sure the TV show Saved by the Bell had a higher budget per episode than this game. The gameplay is only average at best, with long levels that tend to get repetitive and boring. Check it out if you are curious. In 2002, Shinobi was released for the PS2. For the first time, the series has entered the third dimension. Once again, you no longer play as Joe Musashi, but a ninja by the name of Hatsuma, who has had a ninja fashion makeover with his fancy and fabulous red scarf. The first thing you notice when you take control of the game is how smooth it plays. The way the character jumps, runs, and attacks are a sight to behold. You have a double jump and the ability to grab walls and run across them. You have your basic shinobi weapons including a katana, ninja stars, and ninja magic. There is a lock on feature which makes it easy to spot any attacking enemies. A new gameplay feature is a tate, which if you kill your enemies fast enough and build up your combos, your sword will become increasingly more powerful. The gameplay itself is extremely hard right up there with ghosts and goblins in my opinion. The enemies are unforgiving and just seem to crawl right out of the woodwork. There were also no checkpoints and some of the levels are extremely long so if you die it's back to the beginning to try again. If you manage to complete the game you are able to replay it as Joe Musashi. Also in 2002, the greatest Game Boy game to ever be released, The Revenge of Shinobi. Not. The less said about this game the better as it has nothing to do with any previous entries in the series. It's a generic side-scroller in which you control Shinobi on his quest to stop the warlord Asura O. You have your katana and ninja stars as well as a few other new moves. The biggest brand new move in this game is the ability to die of boredom from playing this game. In your quest you have to look for keys and switches in order to open up the exit. The graphics look like an early 1990s Sega Master System game and the animation is terrible. The controls are very sluggish and the levels are long and repetitive. It's just not very good in my opinion. Nightshade was released for the PS2 in 2004. You control the character of Havana, a female ninja who is dressed to the gills in her red and white outfit and a very cool mask. The gameplay is very similar to the previous Shinobi game on PS2 but there have been some refinements. A lot of the changes make the game a bit easier including several different difficulty levels and multi-level checkpoints. The top day system returns and is much easier to use this time around. The level design overall has been improved and some even take place on top of moving vehicles. There are four playable characters in all with each character having different abilities and even Joe Musashi makes his return. Other forms of unlockables include different costumes for the girls as well as the ability to watch all of the full motion cutscenes. Thanks to the decreased difficulty, I enjoyed this game much more and got further along in this one than the previous PS2 entry. In 2011, Shinobi was released for the 3DS system. This was the first game in the series that was outsourced to an American company by the name of Griptonite. The gameplay is a lot like Shinobi 3 for the Genesis but not quite as polished. You take on the mantle of Jiro and longtime fans of Shinobi 3 will feel right at home. 
You have your katana and ninja stars and also throwing daggers. You also have four ninja magic techniques available as well. You have a grappling hook that can be shot upwards to cling to ceilings and you can also slide under low passages just like Indiana Jones. The level design is excellent and the bosses are large and in charge just like the old days. The only drawback in the game is that the levels are just a bit too long. The bonus stage from the original arcade game finally makes its return, but instead of getting extra lives, you get extra points. To use the advanced features of the 3DS, the surfing sequence is controlled by tilting the handheld. There is plenty of replay value with lots of achievements to unlock. Other unlockables include different costumes, artwork gallery, and more. <laughs> Joe Musashi has a blink and you miss it cameo in the movie Wreck-It Ralph in the Bad Guys Anonymous scene. There is also a Tiger handheld version of the game, but to be honest, it wasn't very good. The original arcade game is also available on the Nintendo Switch. Now I wasn't going to talk about this since I usually don't discuss homebrew on my channel, but this is one fine conversion. A user by the name of Trifon has been converting this over to the Mega Drive and it looks absolutely fantastic. Not only does it look good, but it plays good as well. It even has the original arcade sound effects and music. There is still no release date, but in the meantime, you can download a playable demo. And that just about wraps up the history of Shinobi. It's one of my all-time favorite run-and-gun games and it's definitely a classic. If you've never had a chance to take on the role of Joe Musashi, give it a try. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment down below whether you liked or disliked this video. Thank you so much for watching.